So the uh, biggest thematic piece that I will lead us to in the end, in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, is um, really the invisible parts of the galaxy. So it's in the um, observation of the halo um, or the globular star clusters in halo that that we come to our uh, next uh, major thematic piece, uh, which you will see mentioned in this slide and in the next uh, submodule slide. So, so as the people are looking at, uh, so there's a reason they are uh, measuring these orbital speeds of the uh, orbital speeds of these globular clusters um, that reveals something about our galaxy, and one thing that it reveals is that. Um, that this speed it's too fast, especially compared to the sun moving at this fast. Um, if so, if you recall back to Kepler's third law, and you can actually do a quick calculation using Kepler's third law, I've done it for you, uh, based on the sun's velocity of two thirty kilometers per second at this distance, you would be you would expect stars at this distance to be moving at this speed. But the actual measured speed is much faster. And this is the beginning point for what we call dark matter. And it's an unresolved problem. We'll talk about it a little bit more in the next set of slides. But this is the big chunk of uh, what I'm referring to as our thematic piece, which is um, there's quite a big part of the universe that um, that we can't see and we don't see directly. We see their effect. And the more we learn about this, the more it seems that these actually dominate the how the universe works. <laughs> so, um, so because this is a quite weighty matter. It's not a trivial thing. It's not just, oh, funny. Why are these things moving so fast? It's not just standing there. It's uh, actually, uh, this could, uh, um, the resolution of this could mean that gravity doesn't work the way that we thought it does. That's one possible resolution. The other possible resolution is that there's quite a bit of matter that, um, that we can't detect directly that still uh, there's enough of it that it influences the development of galaxies and um, universe. So, so let me skip ahead to the uh, the last of the slides in submodule five point two. So um, this is a reminder of the dark matter that we mentioned earlier. When we look at Milky Way galaxy and the stars at the outer edges of the galaxy we see them moving quite a bit faster than they would if we could say all the matter of the galaxy or close to most of the matter of the galaxy was in the visible portion we see. So, so we are led to saying that there's uh, more matter spread out throughout this spherical volume that we can see, so we call it dark matter. And and if this was something that just stopped with the Milky Way, we might say, oh, that's something peculiar with the Milky Way. Maybe it's some observational error. With the better observations, we'll resolve whatever that is. And um, we don't see that. So this is a rotational curve for triangulum galaxy. It's uh, the, so the galaxy that's closest to us or the galaxy of our size that's closest to us is Andromeda galaxy and a triangulum is the one next to it. Um, so, or one that's kind of next to closest. And uh, we see the same basic features. Now, if you look at the rotational velocity itself, it's not the same velocity because triangulum galaxy is a smaller galaxy. So these rotational velocities are lower than what you see with the Milky Way, but the same pattern is there. So. Uh, what you what we see with the visible matter, this is what we expect. Um, so up to here is where you know at the larger distances you are enclosing more mass within that volume. So um, the higher pull of gravity would allow the stars to stay in orbit as they are moving faster. But at some distance away, you know density of stars thin out, and you would expect in order for stars not to fly out 
they would have to be moving slower. That's what's expected based on our theory of gravity. And that's not what we observe. What we observe is either flattening out the velocity curve or one that even increases. And so this is what we observe with the triangular. We ob observe similar things with almost uh, all the other galaxies for which we can do similar measurements. So <laughs> there's something there. It's not nothing. And this is an illustration with a bigger structure. And this is where um, I would have to defer to professional astronomers who do this uh, inverse problem um, solution. So um, the inverse problem in the sense that what they are working with are these effects of gravitational lensing, these kind of um, distorted uh, things that's um, a result of gravitational lensing and taking these, um, they work backward. Okay, in order to, to produce this type of gravitational lensing, how much mass had to be here? So, um, so and when they work it all out, they have an estimate of mass that's uh, greater than what would be accounted for by the visible mass. So in these larger structures, looking at superclusters of galaxies, we still see continuing evidence for dark matter. If anything, at this scale, dark matter seems to be uh, even at greater proportions than what we see in our own galaxy. So the, it's still there. <laughs> and, and, and this isn't necessarily where we have to end this story with. In, in a, a lower division introductory class like ours is to present where the state of the art is and leave it there <laughs> so um but i want you to refer to something a uh, concluded story that you have seen if you recall back to module three we talked about neptune the planet that was discovered through mathematics um, and in that story, the story resolved as the theory of gravity is correct. There was an, uh, another planet that we didn't see before. Uh, so this was uh, with the orbit of uh, not Neptune, but Uranus. Um, and Neptune was the invisible planet that they discovered and that explained everything. And story of dark matter, it's an ongoing story. And in fact, the use of the term dark matter itself actually biases. It expresses our belief that uh, our understanding of gravity is correct. And uh, what will explain these discrepancies are something that we don't currently see. And dark matter is the name we've given to it. And even though the alternative is not quite as popular, um, I would tell you that there are alternative theories and you will, might hear from some other physicists, even prominent ones who believe in this more. And, and this is an incomplete story, unfinished story until <laughs> this is an ongoing debate. So I'm just gonna leave it there. And um, it would be very interesting if this turned out to be true. In fact, it, it would be interesting if people actually succeeded in finding the dark matter candidate, because so far what we can say is what it cannot be based on null results, based on results that, uh, based on searches that didn't find anything, we can say what it cannot be. And we can say what properties we know they must have or we hope they have. Uh, that's the story of WIMS. And uh, when and if someone actually discovers these weakly interacting massive particles, that'll be someone who gets a Nobel Prize. <laughs> but until someone finds it, it's an ongoing story. Yeah.